to begin. Uh, this is a sort of a programming uh, video. I just thought I'll show you some uh, simple inbuilt functions and how to do the resquare analysis. You've already seen some of the functions. I just thought I'll repeat it again. So here I, I just load up the data set Iris. So the head of Iris. So you can see that uh, Iris has about data on sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and species that it has. So you can just check what Iris is at the bottom. Then you go down and check what Iris is. So it will give you an explanation of Iris in a second. So it's Edgar Anderson's Iris data. It's uh, it's a famous data set by, by Fisher and or Anderson. So what they did was they collected uh, 50 flowers from three species. And the species are Setosa, Versicola, and And they collected data about the sepal length, the petal length, the sepal width of the species. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to see the relationship between sepal length and petal width. That's what we're going to do. Okay. So what I do is I call the LM function and I and I take data set as iris and I want to regress, I want to find the relationship between sepal length and petal length. Okay. So let me just first uh, do interval. Let me do line seven first. So let me plot the, the data set. So you can see sepal length there on the y axis. Petal length. So there's the some sort of relationship between sepal length and petal width. It could be linear, least square line, but it, it may or may not be also linear. So, we don't know. so let's do a fit. So let's do a fit. Fit one is the fit of this. And then so that this does a least square fit between sepal and sepal one. So let's check what the summary of fit says. Summary of fit gives a lot of values. Right? Let's just check each one. So that's what does fit does? So fit does. Uh, it first computes the residuals, that is the from the line that you have. Minimum so the first quarter convenience one and so on. That's the residuals. The highest residual is 1.3. Then the intercept rate is 4.7377, and then the petal width slope uh, estimate is this is 0.886. That's the coefficients of the uh, slope of the intercept. Okay. So then it also gives you, like we did in class, it times and tells you the standard, result standard error, which is 0.478, and so it's 140 degrees of freedom. And then it also computes the R square statistic that we did, and the R is like 0.669, so it's kind of close to one, but not quite, not quite one, but doesn't, it, it doesn't really necessarily dispute the fact that this model may not be appropriate. Then the you know, in thousands we did the t statistics, so t value is so much, and p value is very, very small. That means we cannot we can reject the null hypothesis that beta one is zero, that is the slope is zero. So it says the model is not so bad. So let me just bring this back code again. This code again. Let me go and plot the line on this. Let me plot the line. So the line is like goes through like this. Yeah, so this is a line, and it's sort of a, as you can see, the highest one is one point four. I can say here one point four or whatever. One point three four and then small. Was very very close by, so minus one. So it's not close, a little bit more minus one. Now uh, I do the same thing in ggplot just to sort of give a better call ggplot library. And ggplot you have know, mentioned the data frame. The aesthetics you, x is the you know, present the mapping, x is petal width, y is sepal length. What you want to do, and you have geo point will plot data set and stats will give you a, a smoothened line and also give you a bar like a like a bar. Let's do that. No, it is a small error bar. This is a confidence band that you can calculate for the line as well. So we did in the chart. Right. So that's broadly the uh, code on, on thing on equation. Then I thought I'll just sort of do this simple normal equations calculation for you. So I took uh, let me clear the plots on this side. I took two uh, data set, two two uh, five data data points. So y is generated two variables, x1 and x2. I want to sort of perform a, a regression. So what I did was I, I made the error to be normal uh, with mean zero and standard deviation 0.3. That's what this is doing. And that's my data, the, the features that I create, right? This, so let me just go back and add, actually, let me just go back and add, uh, let's, let's plot this here. Let me come down here and then, <coughs> let me just plot again for you, this is not data from I, let's just put plot uh, y versus, uh, Plot y. Let's plot. Let's see what happens. So x is this. X two is this. So plot y. So y is these data points we have. These five data points along these lines. That's what y looks like. No one has to try and see the line plot. Okay? So this plot doesn't make sense. So let's delete the plot again. So let's do it. 
So then, uh, what was I first get a matrix of y? Just think of y. So y looks like no, y looks like y looks like this, like y one, y two, y three, y five. That's the vector y. Then I get a matrix x. So x should be what now? In the first column should be one. That's what one is. Then I, in the second column should be x one, and third column x two. That's what the C bind does. So I made x. X is this. So x is here. If you look at the x, x is one, one, one. In the first column, x one in the second column, and x two in the third column. In this one, it, you know, what you have to do is to solve beta hat, then what we did thing is beta hat uh, is equal to what now? Is equal to x transpose x, x transpose x times beta, right? And beta is equal to, uh, beta, beta is equal to beta hat solution of, beta solution of x transpose x beta is equal to x transpose y. That's what this beta hat is, right? The exact what the solve function will do. Px transpose the vector x, star multiplies the this matrix multiplication percentage star to the base. Then I'm, I'm trying to solve this is the same, install the star here, and I say on this side I have x transpose y, solve will do this for me. It will just solve the x transpose of beta hat. So let me just try and do Let me do this normal equation. So we had this, so then we had this, let's do beta hat, beta hat. Let's see what beta hat looks like. So beta hat gives me is a uh, is 0.5554, 5, 5, maybe not beta 1 and beta 2 is this, right? So I can do the same thing. I can employ the R's LM fit function like I did before. I do LM. I do LM coefficient. Let's see how far they are. So they're also quite close by. See this point R obviously, 0. 0.5 is very good. It's almost the same, exactly the same thing. So I can either solve the normal equations by hand by myself using this command, or I can use the R, R inbuilt function LM to the whole thing. So you can use other way. Then there's one data set that, that I picked up from this, this website of statistical learning book uh, by Daniel Levitt and others. So you can go to the website and download this this uh, this uh, this data set. So then you have to install this ISLR package, which I've already installed. So let me just play with it a little bit. I include mass and IRS. So what they do is they, they work with a data set called Boston. So let's do head of Boston. So Boston, Boston has this data set in which the data on crime, data on taxes, data on age of population, and so on and so forth, and median income and, and population uh, status, and so on and so forth. So what we'll do is we'll just do a, a, a linear fit between MedView and L stack. Let's do that. So now it gives an error. So why it gives an error is that here I have not put Boston as the data set. So now what I can do is I can do LM and I put data equal to Boston and the error. Data set. LM, LM fit will have LM dot fit, which is LM program, will, will understand and take data from Boston. So I'll do that, then it'll come correctly. So if I go here, it, it has performed the calculation correctly. Right? Another way to do it is if you want to use this command without data set, you first attach Boston, that means the R, and then you can perform the same function with that. Now if you do the same thing, LM fit, it gives you the intercept and the, and the statistic thing. If you do summary LM fit, it'll give you the entire. Uh, Again, the p value is small, we can't tell the hypothesis and so on and so forth. The R square is not so high, it's 0.54. Then I'll let you, then what happens is you can also get the coefficients of L1, that is, there's just a slope of the intercept, but using the command coefficient. You can also get a constant interval for the LM as well, that's given by this 9% um, constant interval that I discussed in class, the intercept and the slope. That's what it's doing. Uh, I let you play with the predict function. I'm not going to play today with, but you can also do the predict function. It, it'll, it'll predict. You can use the predict function to predict the values of the of the y variable when L median met as med wave median income when L stat is five, ten, or fifteen, and also gives an interval. So you can estimate. It's called prediction interval and the, the confidence interval and the prediction interval. And similarly, you can plot these things like I did before. You can plot other side. This is like a curve. It's, it's not quite linear. It's like a little bit of curve, but it's okay. But the line is okay. You can let me make it, let me make it thicker. Let's say, let me make it, let me make it red color, perhaps. So you see the correct line. But it's okay. I'll stop with this today. So simple exercise that I want you to go through. I'll put this code on the website as well, so you can take a look at it and play with it. Thank you.